that's, uh, that's crazy. All right, open your Bibles to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, as we're winding down this letter, um, just uh, two more weeks, I believe, we'll be in this letter. And remember last week, we began talking about how to handle the truth and talked about uh, the movie A Few Good Men. And, and there's this courtroom setting and, and uh, Tom Cruise is in there and Jack Nicholson is in there and he's on the stand and Tom Cruise is you know, screaming at Jack Nicholson and says, I want the truth. And Jack Nicholson says his famous line, you can't handle the truth. And I wonder today, can we handle the truth? And so as we began this, uh, this section last week, we began to talk about uh, Paul uh, giving us four musts in this section uh, regarding the word of truth. Four musts regarding God's truth. He said, first of all, that we must believe the truth and believe that God loves us, believe that God chose us, believe that God sanctifies us, believes, uh, we must believe that God will give us His glory, meaning that we are going to end up in heaven. Praise God for that. I think it was, I was thinking about this this morning. I think it was D. James Kennedy, um, Crusade, uh, Campus Crusade for Christ, and the question used to be, if you were to die tonight, where would you end up? And for those that are in Christ, we have the confidence of knowing that we will end up in heaven for sure. There's nothing that we can do to stop that. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6 tells us that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So we must believe the word of truth. And then secondly, we must guard the word of truth because you know there are predators out there there you know satan is behind all of them and he wants to distort the word of truth and so we must guard the word of truth and that it has the idea of protection it has the idea of remember paul wrote to timothy and said be a worker that needs not to be ashamed rightly dividing or uh, you know guarding and protecting rightly handling the word of truth and so as we get into this next section, we're going to look at the last two of these musts concerning the word of truth. So let's look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and let's look at verses 16 through chapter 3, verse 5. Now, let me, for, for just to get the context, let's go back to verse 13. He said, But we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you, as the first fruits to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. To this he called you through our gospel, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers, stand firm and hold to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by our spoken word or our letter. Now, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and gave us eternal comfort, and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. Finally, brothers, pray for us that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored as happened among you, and that we may be delivered from the wicked and evil men, for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord about you, that you are doing and will do the things we command. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. And so not only are we to believe the truth, we are to guard the truth, and then thirdly, we are to live the truth. Can you handle the truth? Now, it's one thing to know the truth. It's one thing to have an understanding of the truth, but it's a whole different thing if we're, if we're living out this truth, we must live the truth. It's not enough to believe the truth. And it's not even enough to, to guard the truth. We must live the truth. James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25, tells us that if we hear the word of God and don't live it out, if we hear it and, and don't obey it, that we are only fooling ourselves. You know, it, 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 we can have a whole bunch of knowledge... But if that knowledge isn't transferring to our hearts and in 
living, being lived out in our lives is not doing anybody any good, much less ourselves any good. We've got to live it out. And, and in this section, Paul's desire and prayer is to encourage them and to establish them in every work and word. Now think about this. When Paul was with them, those weeks that he spent with them, he encouraged them, as he says in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, and verse 11, he encouraged them as a father does his children. And then he sent Timothy back to encourage them, and we read about this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. And then when Timothy came back with the encouraging word, the good report about the church, Paul himself was, was encouraged about how well they were doing. And then not only was he wanting to encourage them, but he was wanting to make sure that they were established in the Lord. This is a, an important theme also in these letters. He, remember, he sent Timothy back to help establish them. We read about that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. And Paul prayed that God would establish them. Now this word establish has the idea to, to set fast, to, to turn resolutely. So in other words, to, to be firm in your understanding of what the word of truth is actually saying. Not what people say that it says. But what does it actually say? That's a, it was a big deal in Paul's day, and it's a big deal in our day. We need to make sure that we know what God says. Don't take my word for it. Take God's word for it. Dig into the word of God yourself. Make sure that you are reading. Make, make sure that you are understanding. Make sure that you're studying the word of God so that you can be established and, and, and not uh, be tossed about by every wind of doctrine that's out there. And trust me, there's a lot out there. There were in Paul's day, and there is in our day today. There's a lot of stuff that's nonsense. And so we must be established, and that's what Paul is praying here. And he's praying that they be firm in their understanding of what the Word of God actually says. Now, it is God who establishes His people, but, but He also uses people to get the job done. You know, He uses people that, that, that teach the Word of God, that study, and, and, you know, study, as Paul said to Timothy, study to show yourself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. And so as we're proclaiming the Word of truth, as we're teaching the word of truth, we need to make sure that we are understanding and established in what it's actually saying. That's why it's important that we attend Sunday school classes. That's why it's important that we attend Bible study whenever we get the opportunity. That's why it's important that we, that we here uh, attend staff devotions. That's the whole purpose of staff devotions is that we can together be established in the word of truth. And then we must study on our own. Don't just carry your Bible to church or your phone. You know, I know today we have a, a, the, the Bible on the phone. This, I just don't get that. But, you know, I have to have my Bible. I just got to have it. But don't just carry it to church or to, to, to staff devotions. Get into it. Read it. Study it. See what it says for yourself. And so Paul here was concerned about two aspects of their Christian life, their work, their doing, and their word, their saying. And you think about this. If our work, our walk, our doing contradicts our words, our saying, we damage our testimony for the Lord. And we've seen that over and over and over again. And so what Paul was, was really concerned about their work and their word. Our walk and our talk must agree. We used to have a gentleman here that used to talk about that. He, say, he used to say it this way. He said, our talk must walk. You think about that. It, it's easy to say something, right? I can stand up here and say anything. Right? We, can, we can do that, and we do do that, by the way. We can talk. It, it's easy to talk a good talk. 
but does your talk walk? Are we backing up in our lives what we're saying with our words? And that's what Paul was concerned about. And our walk and our talk must agree. These good works and good words must come from the same yielded heart. We're not saved by our works, obviously. We're, we're saved by grace, but our works are evidence of our salvation. And it's not enough to, to depend on good works. These words, or good words, these words must be backed up by our actions. It must be backed up by our life. People need to see the gospel in us, not only hear it from us. They must see our lives uh, being in alignment with the Word of God. Now, are we going to live it out perfectly? No, of course not. Not this side of heaven. We will when we get to heaven, but, but we, our, 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 our talk must walk. John says it this way in 1 John 3, 18. He said, little children, let us not love in words or talk, but in deed and in truth. We must be established in our works and in our words. We must live the truth. Now let's talk for just a, a minute about our words. Now again, we can, we can say good things, but what about when we're not being watched? What about when we're not around other people that we think are listening or hearing? Uh, the world is watching, and, and the world is listening. And, and you know, if, if um, and I use this example all the time, if I'm here or in church and I'm teaching or preaching the Word of God, and then I'm at Walmart, which I hate to go shopping, by the way. If I'm at Walmart and, and somebody catches me and they're just giving it to somebody and just, just screaming and yelling, you're not going to believe what I'm saying here. You see what I'm saying? Our, our, our walk and our talk must agree. And so that's what Paul was talking about here. So we must live the truth. And fourth and finally... We must share the truth. Again, that's what he's talking about in chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. He says, Finally, brothers, pray for us that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored as happened among you. So learning and living must go together. If we believe the truth, it changes our lives, according to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Then we guard the truth to prevent it from being tainted or distorted. And at the same time, we are to live it out. Our talk must walk. We're to live it out so that we can then share the truth with others. And you think about this. We cannot share what we do not believe unless we want to be hypocrites. We cannot share what we do not believe. And so are we actually believing the word of truth? Now, we can say that we do. We, all of us do. We can say that we, oh, yeah, I believe, man, this is, this is the truth of the Word of God. But what about when the temperature gets turned up in your life? What about when things start happening in our lives? Do we, do, do, do we trust the Word of God? Do we believe that He's there? Do we believe that He's going to carry us through? Do we believe that He's going to give us the grace, even if that means ending in our death? And concerning that, do we really believe we're going to end up in heaven? Think about this. Do you really know that according to the Word of God, as a child of God through faith in Jesus Christ, we're secure. We will end up in heaven. And, and listen, I don't know about you, but the older I get, the more I think about those kinds of things. And I think, <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to react when that day comes. You know, I, I just want to, uh, Kelly was just telling me last night about a, a guy that we knew went to sleep and went home. Now that's the perfect way to go, right? I mean, that's the way we would all would like to go, but that's not the case. You know, I'm not afraid of dying in the process. I just don't know about, you know what I mean? But we have to, especially in that day, we have to know that we know that we know God's word is true. And he says that he will take us home. He says that we will spend eternity with him. <clears throat> and if we know that, then we've got to share that truth with others. You know, I've said this before. If we had the cure for cancer, 
Listen, man, I would, if I had the cure for cancer, I sure wouldn't be sitting here saying, oh man, I'm so great, I got the cure for cancer. No, I'd be going everywhere, right? I'd be, I'd be telling everybody, I'd be in every hospital, I'd be every, you know, St. Jude's, I'd be right, everywhere. But we have something better than the cure for cancer. We have the cure for sin. It's called the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are commanded to share this. We are commanded. And that's what Paul, he said, listen, it's not easy. He said, pray for us. Pray for us that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored as happened among you, that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men, for not all have faith. It's not easy to share the gospel. You're not, listen, it would be great if everybody that we shared the gospel with, they said, oh, that's exactly what I need. Can you tell me how to be saved? That's not the case, though. We're going to come up against some opposition, but that shouldn't stop us, and that can't stop us from sharing the gospel. God's word is living and active, according to Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. And so we must let it move freely. We must share the word of truth. When uh, Paul is talking here in verse 1 that uh, the word of the Lord may speed ahead, he's talking about Psalm 147, verse 15, that says this. He sends out his commands to the earth. His word runs swiftly. And think about how he has chosen to get his word out there. He has chosen to get his word out there through us through his children, through his servants. God's servants may be bound, says one author, but God's word cannot be bound. God's servants may be bound, but God's word cannot be bound. Listen to what 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9 says. Well, let me go back to verse 8. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal. But the word of God is not bound. The servant may be bound, but God's word cannot be bound. As we live the truth, and as we pray for the ministry of the truth, God's word will have freedom to run and accomplish the purposes that God has set forth for it to accomplish. And you think about this, uh, the Word of God, when we share the Word of God, God is being glorified in that. When we share the Word of God, God is being glorified in those that receive it as well. And so we must share the Word of God. The Word of God must be central in the work of God. We can't go about doing what we want to do and think we're doing it all for, you know, for the glory of God and if, if it's not based in this. There's all kinds of crazy ideas that are out there. Think about this. The universe was created and sustained by the Word of God. Warren Wiersbe says this. Surely His Word can accomplish His work in this world. But the preaching of the word in the pulpit has too often been replaced by the entertainment of the world on the platform. And then he goes on to quote Dr. Uh, Donald uh, Kogan, who was Archbishop of Canterbury. He said this about Christian pastors. He says, it is their task to feed the sheep, not to entertain the goats. Man, isn't that good? It, it, it is their task to feed the sheep, not to entertain the goats. We must share the word of truth. When we're standing up here or I'm standing behind the pulpit at church, listen, you don't need to hear. They don't need to hear anything from me. They need to hear from God. You need to hear from God. We need to teach the word of truth. And as Christians, we must share the gospel. We are commanded to make disciples of all nations. God didn't save one person to sit still and sit on the Word of God. He commands us to share it. And, and again, think about it. It should be a delight. We should have a desire to share the Word of truth.
If we really, I think, if we really understood what hell really is, if we really understood what eternity is like for those that do not know Christ, then we should have a burning desire to share the gospel. Paul here asked them to pray for them. He said, pray for us that they may be delivered from the hands of unbelieving men who were wicked and evil. Um, you think about this, just as the Spirit of God um, uses dedicated people to share the Word of God, Satan uses wicked people to oppose the Word. He has from the beginning. But Paul had confidence in his readers that they would not yield to Satan, but rather would trust the Lord to establish them and to guard them from the evil one. And we cannot have confidence in ourselves, but we can have confidence in the Lord for ourselves and for others. Don't be afraid. Go share the gospel. Tell somebody about Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John 14, 15, He said, If you love me, you will, uh, you will keep my commandments. It's not enough for just the pastor to share the gospel, to share the word. It's every Christian's job to do that. So we must believe the truth. We must guard the truth. We must live the truth so that we can then share the truth and watch God work. You think about this. Our Savior loved us and willingly died for us. So we should obey Him. We should have a desire to obey Him. And as His children, we must be sharing the truth. And remember one day He's coming back. Remember that's the overarching theme of both of these letters, His second coming. And we will have to give an account for how we have lived our lives as a Christian, not we're not going to be judged for our sin because Jesus took care of that on the cross. He paid for our sin on the cross. But we will have to give an account for what we've done with this and what we've done with Jesus, what, how we have lived our lives as a Christian. And so in this section, Paul instructs us on how to handle the truth. If we fulfill the responsibilities, we will experience joy and power in our lives and growth and blessing amongst God's people. You think about that. It is a joy. Man, we, we are so very blessed to know that we know that we know the one who created all things, to know that we know the one who knows the end from the beginning, to know that He has chosen us and He has called us, He is sanctifying us, He has given us a promise of eternity in heaven with Him forever, and He's given us a task to share the truth. Let's share the truth. Amen? Let's pray. Father, once again, we thank You for this truth. We thank You for this section where Paul... Uh, us these must regarding your truth father help us to be diligent about um, help us lord to, to to be firmly in our own hearts that we believe the truth that we will guard the truth that we live it out so that we can share it boldness lord as we go out and we proclaim the gospel and trust you for the results for all things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.